you guys can see that there's a lot of things that are happening uh, late last night. The Rise promotion, which is um, uh, in Chicago, those guys are affiliated with Shimmer. We're going to be doing a seminar with them in May in Pittsburgh. Uh, that information is available at impactwrestling.com. So just great partnerships. There's going to be an announcement coming out this week as it relates to WrestleCon that I think will surprise, shock, bring up a lot of questions. There's plenty of intrigue that will come from what's going to be announced, hopefully tomorrow. Um, but by the end of the week, I would assume for sure that information will come out and you guys will, uh, I think it'll make a lot of people say, wow. <laughs> Internally, it made a lot of people say, wow. And um, I think as for fans and you guys, experts in the field, you guys are going to say, wow, this is something different, something special, and an opportunity to open up doors and do some different things with impact uh, in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, most likely tomorrow, Wednesday, um, getting us geared up for what should be a great impact. Thursday night, we've got some great matches. Um, a story just went on impactwrestling.com as it relates to Braxton Sutter's return. Sutter will face Phantasma Thursday night. Uh, Tyrus is going to go one-on-one -on -one with EC3. So, you know, just some great matches. Eddie and Sammy, a great match um, that leads to some incredible footage that will all play. I feel like I'm talking, uh, last night my wife and I watched The Bachelor, The Bachelor Tells All, and they kept talking about what's coming and all the things that are going to happen and never before seen, never before done. Um, it, that's sort of like what we're doing right now with Impact, but the things that will play out this week, I think you guys will say, oh, wow, that, that lived up to the hype. So with that said, uh, WrestleCon, everything on impactwrestling.com, um, all of our events that are coming up, March 23rd and 24th in California. Uh, I myself have actually uh, decided to make the trip to Windsor on March 3rd for the um, one night only taping. And then March 4th is the taping for Twitch, which premieres the following Friday, March 9th. So again, a lot happening. Stay current at impactwrestling.com with the events page and um, you know, stay current with all of our socials. So with that being said, um, oh, Ross is gonna yell at me if I don't hit the VIP for April. Uh, Redemption live on pay-per-view April 22nd. Those VIPs will most likely come out next week. Um, if I said last week that they were gonna come out this week, they got pushed because of our WrestleCon announcement that will happen this week. And I think everyone will understand why when that comes out. So with that said, um, I'll answer some questions for as long as you want me to, Ross. We got about five minutes, and then we will uh, bring in Tyrus. But uh, we'll, if anybody has any questions for Josh Matthews, just Josh at this point, we'll open up for some questions for Josh. Q and A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Josh, I wanted to ask you what you thought of the recent gorilla position feature that talks about uh, Ross Foreman, actually, and how much longer he's been in the wrestling business and basically how much more he knows than you. <laughs> um, I think it mentioned that he dresses better than you as well. Well, um, that's a new question. Um, sure, I'll give that about... Who, by the way, who is this? <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> okay. Just so you know, Josh, I, this is not me actually chiming in on that, but go ahead. Well, th that's the gentleman who spoke up last week, right? <laughs> Indeed it is. Ah. Yes, I think he's I think he's very excited about the rivalry between uh, Ross and myself. Got to get it booked for redemption, right? Um, I, I think, um, okay, uh, Ross and what he does. Ross does a lot. Um, he, he, he helps in areas that, that we certainly need it. Uh, the team has become more robust, and having someone like Ross involved helps. Uh, these teleconferences every week are great. Um, I've told Ross my thoughts on them. Um, I'll keep those between Ross and I, and uh, but that will do that for that question. Next. Next question. Uh, <laughs> All I will say about Josh, he's, he's wonderful to work with, and I look forward to uh, April in Orlando. He's buying uh, dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Harry Kettle from Sports Keeder. Josh, as Impact continues to grow as a brand, are there any major markets or countries that you're looking to break into that you kind of haven't already explored at great length? 
Well, I think through GWN and through Twitch, you know, that opens up everything to a whole new world. I mean, because you have to think about, are you talking about television rights and contracts? Or are you talking about digital? And, and we don't have enough time uh, on this call here to get into, you know, those two different conversations. Through GWN and through Twitch, um, and, and Ron fighting in Germany and um, Pluto, our Pluto channel, I mean, we're, we're available everywhere. It's hard not to to get your hands on impact um, in 2018. And I know that I was quoted a couple of weeks ago in saying that more people watch, um, you know, the on-demand services in the United Kingdom than watch Spike, um, the five Spike airing. You know, my point in saying that was that you can watch it at your leisure. You can watch impact uh, when you want to. So even though that premiere on, on five Spike in the UK got pushed back a little later, um, you know, you don't have to be, beholden to you know the the scheduling of a network you can wake up on saturday and you can watch that show whenever you feel like it um so i think that television has changed and through our efforts with gwn twitch pluto ron fighting you know it, it's really hard not to see impact in 2018 not to mention our youtube channel <laughs> if you'd like to ask your request has been received josh this is harry from pro wrestling 247 nbc sports radio um Curious to find out your thoughts on the change in pay-per-views moving forward under the tutelage of Don Callis and uh, Scott Demore. Is this going to be a benefit for Impact, or will it hold back the company? Uh, I don't understand the question. Can you phrase that again? The, the pay-per-views have changed. We now have Redemption coming up in April, and it, it looks like the old TNA uh, era pay-per-views are going to be done away with, and we're going to get some new pay-per-views. that are actually pay-per-views coming out of Impact. Is this going to be a, an, a benefit to the company, or do you think that things like uh, Slammiversary and... Don for Glory are going to still be here. Will those uh, go the way of the dinosaurs also? Well, I think, um, you know, pay-per-view itself is, is, a, is a dated model. Um, to use your phrase dinosaur, it's tough to use. I mean, because Don for Glory and Slammiversary are legacies. Um, so I wouldn't call them dinosaurs. I would say that they are cornerstones of Impact Wrestling. And I think that, you know, Slammiversary and Bound for Glory are names that have equity. Um, I, I like Redemption. I think it's a cool name. I like to look for it. Um, you know, just because it's not called Lockdown, um, you know, I, I think that you still have an April traditional pay-per-view. Um, and then you have Slammiversary, you have Bound for Glory, then you have themed episodes of Impact, you know, the theme, uh, shows like Crossroads. I think we'll see more of the... Sorry? Well, Ross, what was that? I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to move on with one final question for you, Josh. Okay. You may now ask your question. Hey, Josh. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Uh, thank you for joining us, by the way. Now, with the, with the whole GWN, my question to you simply is, what's the next evolution with the, with the Global Wrestling Network? Um, I think we spoke about this when the GWN first came out, and I've been curious to see whether you guys were going to now start facilitating or having pay-per-views on the GWN exclusively, or will you continue using the older uh, pay-per-view system? Thank you, Josh. Sure, it's a great question, and I'm sure it's being explored as to, you know, how quickly, if not live, can we get pay-per-views on GWN? Um, and that would probably go a, a great way in, in helping people um, see those pay-per-views. But I think, to me, it's feeding the beast. It's getting original programming. It's getting new content. Um, you know, uh, you guys saw that when we announced the Twitch um, partnership that there'll be some original programs on there. So I think there's no shortage of opportunities um, in, in what you can do on all across all these platforms. I know that um, people are very excited internally. Our people are very excited about the things that we can do with GWN, the, the legacy content that you guys can see on GWN, everything that will be coming to GWN um, in the very near future. And then you have, you know, the ideas of original programming and what that looks like and, and putting a spotlight really on our stars and learning who these people are inside and outside of the ring. I think one of the one of the one of my most favorite features that we have every week is um, around the ring because it's a six minute interview where you get to learn about our guys. Um, you know, we don't have 
in all the real estate in the world to, to, so you guys can learn who these characters are and get the characters over so you guys can, you know, empathize, empathize sympathize, um, hate, loathe, like, love, um, all those emotions from our characters. So that's, that's to me, you know, personally, I think that's first and foremost, um, you know, I'll let the, um, uh, the executives decide how they're going to roll out the uh, getting pay-per-views on GWN, how long that delay is, and, and all of those details. And with that, Josh, we will say thank you to you. And I will uh, actually, I don't normally do this, but I'll give you a chance if you'd like to uh, welcome our special guest. Uh, Tyrus is on the phone. You have a special welcome for Tyrus. Well, I'll say this about Tyrus. I said it's hard to miss Impact Wrestling in 2018. It's almost uh, as difficult to miss Tyrus. The man's on Greg Gutfeld every Saturday on Fox News. It is the number one show each and every Saturday night. You guys can see that. You can catch him on Preacher, on AMC. You can see him on Glow, on Netflix, season one and season two. My man is doing big things. Uh, he's got a movie coming out very soon. I'm very happy for the success, and I'm more than uh, thrilled that Tyrus has returned to Impact Wrestling. Well, Tyrus, thank you, Brent. Welcome to the teleconference. Thanks for having me. Josh, again, thank you. If you want to sign off, you're good to go. We appreciate your time. We'll talk to you next week. Tyrus, how, uh, how are things going for you these days? Oh, good, man. Um, I'm maintaining. So I'm going to have my head above water. Busy schedule, as Josh just ran, ran down for you. What uh, what do you got going these days? Yeah. Hello? You, you there, Tyrus? Yeah, I'm here. I, was, I said, as uh, as Josh just rattled off your half your resume right there, uh, busy schedule. Uh, what you about a quarter of it. Uh, jo you know, jo the good thing about Josh is, is Josh has always been a good friend. So, um he stays on top of my stuff. Plus, he's always looking. Him and I have done uh, some stuff together, so we're always looking to work together. So he's uh, he's always very supportive. But yeah, I got that and uh, a couple of projects that I can't quite name yet. The movie that I'm working on, um, which should uh, should be released. Some, uh, well, the advertisement stuff should be released for that sometime early uh, around Christmas time. So it's gonna be a big Christmas movie. So I'm excited about that. Well, everything you got outside the ring, but. I'm excited to see you back in Impact. Yeah, and, and I'm, that's what I'm ex most excited about because I took some time off to figure out what I wanted to do, and and uh, I really missed the ring. And um, I thought I was going to come back and have some unfinished business in the ring, so that's my focus as well, and there's no reason why I can't do it all. Championship gold. I know you, you, it's in your future. Yeah. Your thoughts? Yeah, um, it's the one thing that um, has eluded me my entire career. And um, I think I'm due. Is, is that basically putting everyone and anyone on notice? Yeah, I, I mean, at this point in my career, I can, I'm, I'm literally, as far as whether they cheer or boo me, it depends on my mood. Um, you love me, you hate me, it's pretty much, I'm consistent. Uh, but yeah, there are no friends uh, in this business. I mean, you can, you can try, but at the end of the day, we're all competing for the same thing. We want that top spot. We want the championship. I mean, you can tag up with somebody to be tag team champions, and if that's your goal, that's great. But um, with the exception of uh, going for tag team gold, they're really your friends uh, are your, also your enemies, so you've got to keep everybody close. Well, Tyrus, obviously you are, without question, the biggest, most powerful man in Impact. Uh, I I'm sure by the end of 2018, uh, probably even a little sooner than you know, winter of uh, 2018, there will be gold around your waist. On my shoulder or something, but I'm exactly. not playing no more. Dead, let's open it up for questions for Tyrus. Uh, star six, if you'd like to ask a question, uh, a couple things. As always, please identify yourself, your media outlet, and please only one question at a time for Tyrus so we can run through. We have a lot of media on the call here. We didn't talk to him. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. I was always wondering, like, you, you've got quite a presence on the Fox News uh, programs. Have your political stances ever maybe caused an issue among fe uh, fellow wrestlers, or do they just kind of understand what you're doing? Um, you know what? That's, that's a great question. I've always kind of been call it a kind of a guy, and the overwhelming 
um, support I get from um, from my fellow wrestlers is unbelievable. Like, I mean, I don't even think, I think we all respect, we all have differences of opinion or whatever in terms of politics, but the fact that I'm transitioned from wrestling to doing something mainstream that's considered taboo for us because the wrestlers are supposed to be dumb or we're one dimensional or whatever. So I think um, regardless of what my political views are opposed to their political views, um, they're just like, for example, uh, Adonis, uh, some of you guys know him, uh, Chris Masters, whatever. He's probably the most, one of the most supportive guys. Literally uh, every time I'm on the show, I'll end up getting a message from him, Bobby Lashley, Dolph Ziggler. Um, it, it doesn't matter what brand they're from. Everyone loves the fact that I'm showing that not, you don't always have to have the greatest push in the world. Talent always shines through. And the fact that wrestlers are, we're the greatest entertainers in the world. No one has to prepare, prepare like we do. No one goes through what we do physically, mentally. We don't get retakes. You know, uh, our fans hold us to the grain. So I, I, we don't get enough credit for the entertainers that we are. And, and I, being in movies and stuff, uh, there's, we'll do 25 takes on a hello scene. You don't get that in wrestling. So we're always pretty supportive. I, I, even if they disagree, um, it's all love, if that makes any sense. Thank you. You may now ask your question. Hello, Tyrus. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Again, sir, thank you for joining us here. Thank you. Uh, all right. So, you know, this is a pretty straightforward question. I mean, you're huge. You're strong. You're agile. You're very well spoken. You have a great look. If I was a booker in any organization, you would be my world champion. So very, very simply put and very simply asked, how would Tyrus book Tyrus? That is a great question. And I would book, And you know what? I'm going to go back to my mentor. Um, I had an argument once with um, the, the late, great Dusty Rhodes. He was telling me, he was bragging about, uh, you know, I'm world champ. I was world champion. Um, I was this and that, and I snapped back at him. Yeah, because you were the booker. And then he told me that I'm a little too smart for my own good. So yeah, if I was the booker, I would, I would book myself uh, as world champion. But at the same time, I would be building a baby face somewhere to shock the world at one point. Thank you, sir. Yep. Muted. Even Tyrus, Harry Kettle from Sports Kida. As we know, in addition to your pro wrestling career, you're also a political commentator. In your mind, how important is it for professional wrestlers to have another plan or career lined up either alongside wrestling or for when they hang up their boots? Oh, I think it's essential. I think it's important. Um, you cannot do this forever. And the guys that stay too long, I think, are disrespectful to the business and to the guys coming up. I don't think it's fair to see a 60 year old guy in the ring that everybody, you know, it's a feel good moment for the fans, but it's really a disconnect and it's, it's, it's time to move on. Um, so I'm not real supportive of some of the classics that hang around too long. Cause I, I don't think it's fair. And I, I think it, it hurts, it hurts the brand and the business, not to mention the fact that you want to be able to grow in life. If you were a great wrestler and you were, I mean, you moved on to be, whatever it is you choose to be since you're a coach, real estate agent, professional actor, judge, sheriff, whatever, um, that you're able to transition to do that and do that as well too. It just goes to show um, how successful wrestlers are to be a sports entertainer and why for kids who go, I'm gonna get into this business and spend my time, make my money, um, and then transition to other things because you cannot in this day and age with concussions and and people are just bigger, faster, stronger, and the physicality of the business, you need to have a plan B. Because things aren't always promised, you know? You get fired, and then what do you gonna do? You know, some guys get, you know, you have to have a backup plan. And, and, and not just wrestling in any extra, what I would consider extracurricular, not guaranteed thing. If you're gonna play professional sports, if you're gonna be an actor, an actress, a singer, uh, anything that is up to other people's discretion, whether you get a job or not, uh, you should definitely have a backup plan. Hi, Tyrus. This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com. 
I uh, recently read Bill DeMott's book, and I remember when I knew you in Deep South Wrestling, you guys were very close, but in his book, he was very derogatory very towards... Nice. Yeah, so I was wondering what happened between you guys and what you think about those comments he made. Um, him, first of all, Coach uh, DeMott and I, we have a good relationship, uh, actually a great relationship, and during the time of when when he got let go at Deep South, I didn't, um, wasn't happy with the way things went down, but I was very vocal about that to him. And he was upset at me. And I think he was upset at a lot of people just, uh, with the way that, you know, he was like, no, and, and the way that I guess when just like in my idea, when a you play, I played football and stuff. And when a coach got fired, the new coach came in, that was a new coach. And you went back to work. Cause at the end of the day, you're trying to get a job. So you thought we didn't have a job yet. So I embraced the new coach and just went to work. Dr. Tom Pritchard was amazing, and he brought a completely different style than uh, Coach Bill did. He was psychology and presence, and, and Bill was, was work ethic and, and move sets and things like that. So they were completely two different things, and, and some of the guys kind of formed this alliance where they were like loyal to Bill and this, that, whatever, and I really didn't want much to do with that. I was going to keep doing what I had to do. But... Um, he had, it's actually funny. He, when he came back to uh, FCW, his book had just maybe had been out for a couple of weeks, and Zach Ryder came running up to me uh, to show me the book. And Coach had come out of Demar had come out of the the office and was like, "Give me that." And then he was like, "Before you see this, I just let's, let's step outside, let's talk about it." And I was like, "Is there? Am I in the book?" Because I had never been in the book before, so I was kind of excited about it. He said, like, "Yeah." And then uh, he was like, "Listen." I was a little upset at the time, and I might have said some things out of anger, and, uh, you know, I apologize. I'm like, well, let me read it. I mean, before you go, let me read it. And, um, and, um, he basically said that the only thing talented about me is my name or something like that. But, um, he apologized for it, and I said, listen, tell yourself at the time, and, and you're allowed to do that. So, uh, I let it go. It wasn't a big deal. People are going to say things about you. You can't make everybody happy. Everyone always has an opinion. Some people love you, some people say you suck. It's just the way people are. Hi, Tyrus. Anthony from Team Venom Media here. Mm -hmm. um, we heard earlier about how the Bengals has eluded you throughout the years. So, what do you plan on doing to change this? What can Tyrus do that ensures you get wrestling gold around your waist sooner rather than later? Um, that's a great question. What can I do? Be prepared. Um, training my ass off and um, just waiting for the opportunity. But I'm ready. If you'd like to ask, your request has been received. Hey, Tigers, we have an email question in from David Dunn of the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Insider. No, we can accept his uh, apology for not being on. It's about 3 in the morning where he's at uh, right okay. about now. But he had a three-part question for you. If it's all around one subject, uh, it's about your role in GLOW. Uh, what was filming like uh, for the series? Did you know at the time it was going to be received so positively? And how do you think the show benefits both Impact and the wider wrestling business? Um, yeah, of course, it was a blast. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do. I got to play uh, kind of a goofy character, which was was fun because I always carried myself as an intellectual type. So that part was fun. Um, I think it was as far as it showed that other companies, superstars are stars too. It, um, you don't always have to be from the WWE to get a guest spot in the movie. Sometimes the best performers aren't necessarily always in the WWE. So kind of cool that was able to just get that job based off merit, you know, not what necessarily company I was working for at the time. Hello? 
Tyrus Harry here from NBC Sports Radio, Pro Wrestling 247. How do you feel some new guys have come into Impact? Uh, how do you feel about guys like Congo Kong, who is more your size, and maybe locking horns with him and or perhaps being a tag team with him? Well, uh, I haven't really got, I haven't got to know that much. It seems like he's a guy. Um, he's a little confusing to me because uh, he hangs around that um, the guy from the Diet Dr. Pepper commercial. What's his name? Jimmy something or whatever. Uh, I just Whenever I see him, I just want to Diet Dr. Pepper. Um, I think change is always good. Guys should be coming in. There should be new guys coming in. Um, as long as they're ready to be professional and bring their work ethic every day, I got no problem with it. But at the end of the day, it's it's a business, and we only want the best guys here. So as long as they're willing to bring it, we're good. You may now ask your question. So I'm not really looking. If I was going to tag up with somebody, it'd be somebody small. Hey, Tyrus, it's Big Ray again from OneWrestling.com. You know, I was talking to one of my co-hosts, Ben Hameen, and also I was talking to Bill Abner because he hadn't watched Impact in a little in a little while. He's always so busy. And, he, you know, we were talking about your, your physique and how it's changed over the last couple of years. And I follow you on IG. I follow you on social media. And, and I've watched the slow progression of your body changing. And, and you look great, by the way. So I just wanted to know, like, what are you doing? I've become a little bit of a gym rat myself. Uh, you know, eating, what are you eating, what are you doing in the gym? More or less, why did you make this change in, with your physical uh, appearance, I guess you would say? And thank you. Um, well, that's a great question. Number one. Muted. I always wanted to be, I always wanted to improve. And the one thing that um, when I got, I, I always looked at ways, but I never had looked at white. I was always strong. I would put strongly. I would sort of look with smart any sense. And when I got to Hard Knock South, uh, when I was actually with Rob McIntyre, uh, John Cena's trainer, we kind of, he looked at me and he says, what are you going to do with my gym? He says, what are you going to do? You're already a big guy, you're already strong. And I said, I won't be better. And he was like, well then, we're going to have to look differently. We have to change things. And ironically, I'm stronger now than I was then. And I've been with Hard Knock South since 2010, so eight years. And it took, it took, you know, 10 years or 20 years to get uh, my body that way. So we knew, I knew it was going to be uh, without any cheating um, to get my body to make changes. It was going to be diet. And um, as far as diet goes, I got with um, sensible meals. And basically, because I'm, I'm bad at, I'm not the best guy at prepping food. I don't like to, I, I mean, I like to cook, but I like to cook bad, if that makes any sense. Like, I'll make a giant thing of like, Spaghetti, you know, I'll make pancakes and eggs in the morning, but um, as far as like chopping up chicken and portioning everything out, I'm just, it was just, it took, it was too, it took too much time and then it was, I would forget to eat it or I would forget to, you know, I'm traveling. So sensibly meals when I, uh, in the rink and she was like, basically, we'll ship it to your door. It'll be prepped. You can take it when you travel, wherever you're at, you know, and it was so cheap too. I mean, it was like 125 bucks a week and I spent more of that sometimes just going to one restaurant by myself and then over time eating smaller portions I found like at first the first two weeks it sucked because I was literally going through withdrawals and I wanted to eat and I was making excuses to eat and I still have times where I have to fight that I mean I'm literally always going to fight the the craving bug um but I eat smarter now I, I don't necessarily eat for joy uh, I don't like everything that I eat. I don't enjoy every meal that I have. I always tell myself now, food is fuel, period. Like, it's not it's not a good time. You want to have a good time, go to a club or, or or make a friend or get a hobby, work on your hobby. You don't make food your hobby, and that's probably the biggest thing that I've got over. And just committing myself to, like, training, it's a hobby now. Like, I lift, like, some people go to church, um, and I eat when I'm supposed to eat. And I like I, said, I still have days. I still have times where like, I want to have pizza and things like that. But I have to do it portion control. And if I do let myself go and, and have a bad day, I have to understand that um, that's not the norm. Being full all the time is not the norm. And a lot of people like, and I post everything on, I've been completely transparent about it. I post everything on my IG as far as my training and my diet stuff goes. And the biggest concern I get from people is I'll hear, well, that's not enough food for me. It, it is enough food for you. You just overeat. Like this whole thing where you had to fill a whole plate of food, uh, and if you clear your plate, you're you know you're a good kid. That's terrible 
terrible parenting we now. We know that he shouldn't be eating anything more than your fist. Like, food is fuel, and we've kind of mistaken it for that's the only time family sits together is when they eat. And instead of, like, making family time, you know, because everyone's on their cell phones and their iPads now. So um, just re- rewiring my brain, basically, from what is okay as far as eating and what's not. And it's been... It's been contagious, and my my kids eat that way, and I eat that way, and so I'm, I surround myself with people who are positive. That's another thing too. I don't really some of those, some of my smaller friends when they go to eat, I go the other way because they eat the wherever they want to because they have the metabolism of a crackhead, and I don't have that kind of metabolism. So uh, it's a constant effort. I'm working to improve it all the time, but uh, I got a good diet plan with sensible meals because I didn't like to do it, and I got a good trainer, and I I lift whatever I want to because I'm on the Moji app which is, has all my workout for me so and holds me accountable. So as long as I have uh, accountable and I, I push myself, um, that's been the whole thing. But it's a journey. I'm not sure where I want to get to yet, but I'm just, I like where I'm going. Hey, it's Iris Sean of uh, WrestlerFightful.com here. I was instructed to ask you how big of a fan you are of curling and who won the big oh. pool. Okay, well, first of all, T3 is a son of a bitch. Let me just say that right now. And I, I hate him as a person. I know he put you up to this. Um, he didn't win anything, okay? He drew, his name was drawn, he won the lottery, I got stuck with Japan, he got USA, and they upset, and they they won color. We do it every year, and, you know, did he tell you what he had to do the year before when he lost? It was very vague. Oh, very vague? Yeah. I, I, yeah, why don't you ask him to explain go for the gold or taste the gold? Ask him what that is. That, that, that was his answer. Tell him that uh, Tyra said, um, yes, he, he won the thing, but at least I didn't have to taste the gold the year before. I don't think I'm allowed to. WWE won't grant us access to talent, so we're, we're stuck oh, with your side of the story. Oh, well, then cool, yeah. We felt bad for him, and we, uh, we let him... Uh, you know, but he won. He won the uh, curling event. It's a, it's a tradition. We do it uh, every Winter Olympics. We all draw, and um, and everyone. We all battle back and forth with, and you know, there's some side bettings and some things going on, and some, uh, just some fun, just some some guy fun, um, which is you know illegal nowadays, but uh, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good break. But yeah, he won this year. I had Japan, so I got. I got I got screwed. The year before I had China, I came in second, which is basically even worse because I had to watch them choke at the end. So, um, but you know, next four years maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get a uh, I'll get Canada or USA or Norway or one of the countries that actually is good at curling. Do you all do one for the Summer Olympics too? Um, we haven't. I know we're looking for one. It has to be obscure. Can't you know? Can't be anything fun or cool like track and field. We're leaning towards badminton, but we haven't quite uh, locked that down yet. Thank you, Harris. What was your take on the uh, just completed uh, Winter Olympics? You know, I've uh, I was just asked this uh, last week on the Gutfeld show, and I my thing is I just feel that especially the Winter Olympics has just really lost its steam in, in terms of like viewership and stuff because we have so much stuff going on now in the country that there's what a thousand TV channels and, and you know, it's the middle of the NBA and major league baseball getting started up. And uh, it's just worldwide. And there's not that we don't have that big rivalry anymore. We don't have the USSR anymore, you know, and uh, China for whatever reason has just never been like a big rival to us as far as sports and, and stuff like that goes. So it's just, it's kind of until we get like a big rival, um, on the world scene, and that may happen. You know the way things are going, we may end up having a superpower that we have we have issues with. But it's just not quite the same thing. You don't, you're not really vo- voting. You, know, you just expect USA to win, and when they don't win, um, you usually make a kind of like, well, they're from New York, Sweden, it snows, so we should win. So it's just not not the same for the United States uh, as it is for the other countries. I think. Are you a uh, winter or summer Olympics fan? Uh, track. I always like track and field. I threw shot put, so uh, and hammer and discus in high school and college. So I definitely, I always check that out just because uh, you know 
I love to see the the new marks and stuff like that and be like, how the hell is that guy throwing, you know, 72 on a shot, you know? But, um, so I'm, and plus, uh, it's something I, it's just warmer. I'm not a big, I'm not a big snow guy. So I skier, snowboarder, snow, you know, I won't even go tubing. Just, you know, I'll throw a snowball at you if you annoy me. But uh, the other stuff I can relate to because I did it. If you'd like, your request has been received. Anthony again from Team Venom Media. Um, my question is, what does a professional wrestler like yourself who dabbles in acting and the political thing that you're into, what, what do you do in your downtime? What does Tyrus do to relax when you're away from work? Um, that's a great question. And you have to have outlets, first of all. You have to, or you drive yourself nuts. Uh, one thing I do is I stay off of my phone. Um, I try to like enjoy things. Like, I, of course, I like to, I lift pretty much uh, four days a week, and uh, I got my Xbox from a video game. And I play like a lot of seasons, like my NBA 2K and my hockey. And uh, I'm stuck in. Uh, I'm almost finished up with Gears of War, but once I start a game, I won't start another game until I finish it. Um, and I like playing with my kids. That's always fun, and being a part of their growing spurts and their activities, and all their weird stuff. And uh, I, have, I have fish tanks. I'm an avid fish tank guy. I got. Uh, so I'm into that kind of stuff, and uh, I want to get a dog. I'm just traveling so much, but I think I like a dog better than people. I mean, that'd be my better best friend. Um, but I try to do different things. Um, I try to go to concerts and stuff like that, but that stuff's kind of hard because I get recognized a lot. So I try to lay low and just do like fun things and um, just try to be outside more, go you know, for walks, stuff like that. Um, just stay busy and just lots of little things. Models, um, building a Godzilla right now, and uh, some Dragon Ball Z uh, kit, action figure kits, because my son likes that stuff. So, um, so I have fun as much as I can. Thank you. Hey, Tyra, Sean Ross at Fightful.com again. Uh, when you came back to Impact Wrestling, who reached out, or was it you that reached out to them? Because I know that there was a departure last year. How did that go about? Um, basically, the departure, uh, and uh, the room kind of knows the story. I just didn't, uh, I wasn't comfortable with the management. Um, and um, I'll just leave it at that. So I asked uh, to move on. And then um, once, literally once, the announcement was made um, that the management was gone, um, I think... I think we sent emails literally within uh, like 15 minutes of each other asking, uh, I said, I'd be willing to come back. Uh, Cause I didn't want to break my contract. I've never really quit anything, but I just felt it was impossible to work with um, the management dealing on the, the personal issues that I had had with them in the past. And I'm, not, I'm uh, at a point in my life where I'm not going to just be like, Oh, just stick it out. You know, if it's a bad situation, I'm going to speak up. And um, I had a great, I liked, I had a great respect for Ed and I liked, uh, his vision and uh, where they were trying to go and I just once the other element was out of there there was no reason why I, I wouldn't want to come back you know and the one great thing about impact is they allow me to do uh, they are so supportive of the other things I do um, and scheduling wise it's a lot it's a lot easier for me so um, so that's why I, so it was it was an easy call to come back okay thank you you may now ask your question. Hey. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. You, you could finish that up. Oh, no, no, I'm good. All right, cool. Um, again, uh, Big Ray for One Wrestling .com. You're You're an extremely intriguing person. I've interviewed you a couple of years ago when you first left the WWE, and everybody knows that you've been the bodyguard for, you know, Snoop Dogg, so on and so forth. Uh, first, really quickly, are, are you a fan of hip-hop music, really quickly? I'm a fan of old hip-hop music. Okay, hold on, Do hold stuff? on. Be, be, before, I don't mind you. Before, you can, before you continue, before you continue, I wanted to know your sincere thoughts, because wrestling questions can be boring sometimes. What are your sincere thoughts about hip-hop music today? Because me and my buddy Ben were going back and forth about this. He knew I was coming on with you, so I thought it'd be fun to ask you 
about what you're and I know you're going to give me an honest opinion on what hip hop music today is like. I think it personally is is absolutely terrible. You and I both came from the same age, the golden age, the 80s, the 90s, so on and so forth. So please elaborate, sir. Well, hip hop, first of all, is dead. OK, um, when the number one song is a guy whining about a girl who left him, I don't care about you. That's where we're at. Kid. That's how we have our problems now. Uh, I when Ice Cube and and uh, and guys from that era, Pac, Biggie, their lyrics they told stories. Their, their rhymes were were genius. Nobody could copy them because they dropped. They told a story when they the craft was the rhyme, but the the artistic was the story. We forgot the story, and all we talk about now was whips, chicks, and anybody can get a woman. It's not difficult. You know, even if there's ill-gotten means, $25 would get you a hug. You know what I'm saying? So they, they have just completely forget. It's become industry, and they don't even rhyme anymore. They whine. They sing when they talk, so that's technically not really rhyming. I don't care about you. I mean, that's not, that's not still. And everyone sounds the same. It doesn't, you don't even have to match the music. I mean, the videos don't match. I mean, it's just, it's, it's. It's terrible, but it's it's because and when you do have a good artist that does come out, he stands out, but he's usually overdrawn because it's basically studio rappers. They put they put the act together. Like everyone talks trash about like in sync and, and like the boy bands that do the same thing with rap groups and rappers. The studio has a bunch of beats and writers and they pick someone somebody wins the audition to be the gangster and he drives around in his least car, lives in his least apartment and they they found this ridiculous five year uh, album deal that he'll never possibly live up to so they can take everything back at the end. I mean, it's the same. It's just, it's tragic. I've actually transitioned. I'm, I've been digging into old rock and roll. Like, I just, I'm newly discovered bands like Led Zeppelin. Like, I'm, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm like, throughout that and the old ADD stuff, I had to find new sounds because when I lift weights, I listen to the same stuff. I listen to Cube, I listen to Pac, I listen to Biggie, I listen to anybody from that era. Um, you know, Mac 10, uh, exhibit guys that, that, that I lyric, I like a good lyrical guy, good beat, but a strong message and says it's on his mind. Uh, probably the latest guy that probably the most like, I like Daddy Kiss. I thought Daddy Kiss, he's another guy who keeps it pretty, he's got decent lyrics with his stuff. But, um, other than that, man, it's dead. It's not coming back, but so is rock and roll. You know, like if you're not, if you're not on a get on a reality TV show, apparently you can't be an artist. So, I mean, rock and roll is dead too. I mean, it's all just, it's all just computer dance music now and, and whatever is, whatever is clever on the, um, social media chart is what the songs are about. So it, it's sad. Music, music is, is kind of dead, but luckily I got iTunes. I don't listen to the radio at all. It's just amazing. Kyrus, you talk to uh, Sanjay Dutt much about, uh, music? No, uh, uh. All right, well, we we only have a couple time for a couple more questions for you, Tyrus, and then we'll wrap it up here. Tyrus, this is Harry from uh, NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 again. You mentioned earlier about Godzilla, and I am a huge Godzilla fan. I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on that particular genre of movie, the kaiju films, because we're getting to ready to have Pacific Rim 2 coming out. Do you, right. What do you think of uh, movies, the giant monster genre of films? Here's my thing. I love the the Japanese format, and um, and I always, I, I actually, I'm doing another movie with him. Um, he directed uh, Godzilla: Final Wars, and I was so thankful that he still incorporated the old genres. I grew up. I have every possible Godzilla figure out there. I get all the ones from Band out of Japan. It's completely overpriced, but they're phenomenal. Um, I have on my if you, if you grab my iPad right now, there'll be at least six Godzilla movies on there. Like I just enjoy them. Uh, I loved them as a kid, and I never got over it. And uh, every time there's a new one out, um, I'm checking it out. Shin Godzilla was different. Uh, I like the way they did it, and I know they have because uh, I have new the new action figures kind of come out before the new the Japanese movie. They have a super ultra. Mecha Godzilla, so I know there's a new Mecha Godzilla and a new Godzilla coming out from um, their side, and then of course um, over in the states we got the series going where you know Godzilla, then they had Kong, and it looks like they're gonna have Rodan and uh, 
seems uh, easier. So, I mean, it's, I love that it's still around because uh, my kids are kind of like, but it's kind of like a puppet. No, it's not. You know, and uh, Pacific Rim was a present surprise. I was like, wow, this isn't bad. So I'm looking forward uh, to the second one. And ironically, when I wrestled uh, Magnus in Japan, they were actually chanting Kaiju. So uh, I was pretty proud of that. And that's actually what they brought me for gifts. They asked me, what would you like us to bring you for gifts? Uh, your sponsor. And I was like, whatever Godzilla stuff you've got, I'll take it. <laughs> Obsessed with Godzilla. I have a Godzilla tattoo. Hi, Tyrus. Anthony from Team Venom Media again. Um, one last question, mate. Um, we know that Austin Aries has recently joined Impact Wrestling and is world champion. How was he received in the dressing room by all the other wrestlers? Um, pretty much like everybody else. How you been? Welcome back. We don't have a, a, a negative dressing room. At the end of the day, we all have to work together. We all have to get along and everyone wants everyone to be successful. I mean, he's just coming off. Uh, he had a book come out and uh, you know, he's on, he's on, well, he's a multiple team, he's like a six time world champion right now. So I'm definitely happy to see him. That means I can get my hands on him. And I don't think he's ever faced a guy like me. He, just, he definitely can't get me up for his, for his finish. So it'd be definitely different. But he's, you know, he's one of the greatest in the world right now. And, uh, it's nothing but love and we're glad to have him. From, uh, from the business side of it and from the, from the competitive side of it, why wouldn't you want to be the one after the guy who's, uh, you know, pretty much on fire right now so i was glad to see him back the more i'm glad to see more guys the more guys we have come back the more guys that we have stayed the more guys that we have come on the scene is, is better for everybody i'm not i've never been afraid of let the best man win you know what i'm saying like give me the mic let's do this so um you know and i think there's probably a lot of stereotypes about guys and maybe he's got a bad rep it's like he's bad in the locker room but every every pretty much every um Every interaction I've ever had with him has been positive, and he's a good guy. And maybe he's misunderstood just because he's professional and knows what he wants, and he's not one of those guys who's not going to say what's on his mind. I think outspoken is good if you're intelligent, and he's an intelligent guy. So, I, and as an outspoken guy myself, I definitely ain't going to criticize somebody for speaking up. Because if I don't like something, I definitely will say what's on my mind. Well, with that, uh, Tyrus, we will wrap up today's uh, media teleconference. I appreciate it, and. Uh, well, Got a final thought and uh, wishes as we, we sign off for today? Oh, man. I uh, just appreciate everyone for tuning in and make sure you guys catch us. Uh, Impact Wrestling, whenever you get. And, uh, you know, you can always hit me up on Twitter, which is uh, at Planet Tyrus. And uh, my IG is uh, Tyrus Smash. Both are verified. So get caught up with those impersonators out there. And if you have any more questions or anything, then for the next uh, 20 minutes or whatever, hit me up and I'll try to answer for you on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Enough said. Kyrus, thank you so much. Media, thank, thank you guys. You, we will be back next week with another uh, superstar from the world of Impact.